One thing to watch out for in this generation is something called the itching ears gospel, which really isn't a gospel at all. Paul warned about these days in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where he says that at one point people will stop enduring good teaching and start following a gospel that's more palatable to their own tastes, one that doesn't require sacrifice and one that definitely doesn't require repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. For this itching ear syndrome, we need some ointment. Even more, so much of this message geared toward itching ears has a foundation and a bedrock in pride and literally sin. And all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but it's something to watch out for. It can sneak up on us very easily. In situations where someone is grasping for every single title they can be honored with just for the sake of being honored, and maybe they don't even have good fruit in their ministry, that's one thing to watch out for as well. And if they're filthy rich and the sheep are struggling to survive, watch out. You need to discern the fruits on the tree. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says that pride goes before destruction. You may have heard it. More concisely stated, pride goes before a fall. It's very true. Pride never helps anyone. There are many examples of pride in the Bible. Some come to mind right away. Nebuchadnezzar, the stark contrast of him being so exalted and then God humbling him <laughs> and him eating grass in the field for years. I also look to examples like Herod in Acts chapter 12, where people say, he has the voice of a God. And Herod doesn't say, no, 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 that's not me, that's not me, I'm not God. But he just accepts that praise. And what happens? There's the and immediately. He gets struck down and he's eaten by worms. What also about Satan? Satan never benefited from pride. We can look to Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28 about his fall. We see also in Revelation that his ascension attempt is a big failure as well because who throws him into that bottomless pit for the thousand years before the millennial reign of Christ in Revelation 20? Is it God? Did Satan exalt to such a high level that God throws him in the pit? Nope. You see from the start of chapter 20 of Revelation that it's an angel. And Satan's a very powerful angel. We don't need to mess around with him in our, in our own strength. We need to proclaim, hey, the Lord rebuke you. Just as, hey, Michael did in Jude, we see that. In this day and age, pride's not even going to work for Eddie Long. It's not going to work for you. you know, there's only one King of Kings and Lord of Lords in this kingdom, and that's Jesus Christ. And you, you must point to him. We must humble ourselves. Realize that even Jesus was exalted because of his ultimate humility and his obedience to God the Father. And for this day, we need to turn away from our own pride. We also need to turn away from every false gospel everything that claims to be glorifying to God, but really isn't. I'm reminded of Jeremiah chapter 3, where the Lord says to his backsliding people Israel, that if they turn and they obey his voice, that the Lord would give them pastors and shepherds after his own heart that would feed them in knowledge and understanding. And I pray that's true for you. If you're a pastor, that you feed your flock according to the care that God has put in your heart for them and with love from his kingdom. And if you're not a pastor and you're a servant of the living God, I pray that you are fed by a good pastor after the Lord's own heart. It's something where we need to have discernment in all of this and, and choosing a place where we're really fed spiritually and are being pointed to Jesus. It's a main trait of a good pastor that he points you to Jesus and not himself. One thing is really striking to me about Herod and going back to Acts 12 where it says, and immediately. Some of our sins are going to be dealt with immediately, and there are consequences for our sins as well. We have to deal with those, but even more, on Judgment Day, we're going to have to give an account for everything that we've done. So live with that in mind, that on Judgment Day, we're going to give an account to God for everything we do. 1 Peter chapter 5 deals with this whole pride issue. It says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, we must humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he might exalt us in due time. And sometimes pride is a latent issue where we think, I got this with regard to life. We don't commit things to him. We need to commit all things to God. And so if you're living your life in denial of the cross of Christ and in a prideful way, in the pride of your heart and your own sins, if you haven't confessed your sins to the Lord, I would advise you so strongly, repent and believe in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and for salvation. God has provided the way to peace and that way is the way, the truth, and the life is Jesus Christ. So if you need to renounce your pride and humble yourself under the cross of Christ, I would advise you, pray now, commit yourself to the Lord and follow him. So my final advice here, first, watch out for false and wrong teaching. 
Watch out for people who exalt themselves to lofty positions. Also, watch out for pride in your own heart. That's always something to watch out for. And third, if you need to commit your life to Jesus, I would advise you pray, commit your life to him, and follow him today. If you don't know the words to speak, if you want to commit your life to Jesus, if you believe that he died for your sins and rose again, providing that sacrifice for your sins, you can pray with me and analyze these words too. I don't want you to just spout off words that you don't mean, but pray with me. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for his sacrifice. Think that we don't have to live in deception. Father, I commit my life to you. Forgive me for my pride. I renounce any pride in my heart. Any secret sins, Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me, Lord. I want to live my life for you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. And I believe that he rose again. I believe he was the sacrifice for my sins. And I accept that for my life. Help me follow you. Father, help my life be an honoring sacrifice to you and your kingdom. Thank you for being the king over all. And I just praise you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that and you haven't done that before, you haven't committed your life to Jesus, let us know. We would want to help you grow and we might be able to send you some literature or do something for you just to help you grow. That's important as well. It's not just a one-time thing. It's a walk and a relationship. So anyway, that being said, yeah. Keep away from pride. Keep away from prideful teachers. And God bless you. Have a great week.